In part A of this alkaline earth metals lab, we are going to observe some solubility patterns. And so we are going to take nitrate salts of the earth metals like calcium nitrate, strontium nitrate, magnesium nitrate, and barium nitrate. And we're going to see um, how they, if they precipitate with sulfuric acid, sodium carbonate, ammonium oxalate, potassium iodate. So I'm using this, these wells here and we're just gonna react them in a grid-like pattern. And all we need to do is take a couple drops. So I'm gonna to start with the sulfuric acid and just down the row put three drops in each well. And I am just going to follow suit with each of these others. This is probably a part that I will fast forward. Now we're going to react crosswise and we'll start with barium nitrate. Okay, so the barium reacted and precipitated with sulfuric acid, sodium carbonate, ammonium oxalate, and to a lesser degree, but still precipitate with the potassium iodate. Now we're gonna react with magnesium nitrate. It seems that we get, we only really get precipitation between the magnesium nitrate and the sodium carbonate. The third row, we'll use the strontium. Looks like our precipitates between strontium are with the carbonate and the ammonium oxalate. Uh, we have some late onset precipitation with sulfuric acid to a lesser degree, but still there's some precipitation there. And our fourth row will be with the calcium. And our calcium precipitates just with the sodium carbonate and the ammonium oxalate. In part B of this lab, we're going to observe the oxidizing strength of the different halogens. Uh, but first, we're going to observe what they look like. So I'm going to put a small sample of each of the halogens into a test tube so we can see them up close. I'm going to start first with bromine. So 
this is bromine saturated water. As you can see, it has a yellowish appearance. Next, we're going to observe chlorine. Now, these are nonpolar diatomic solute molecules. They're not ions, they're the halogens. Hence, written as Br2, Cl2, and so on. The chlorine doesn't really appear to have a color, it looks kind of clear. And the iodine. Iodine has kind of a amberish, orangish color. So compare these two together. They both have a, it would be inaccurate to call them both yellow because we would need some way to distinguish them. So the bromine here is kind of a brighter yellow, whereas the iodine is more of an orange or yellow. So next, we're going to add hexane. Hexane is a nonpolar solvent, and the nonpolar molecules will dissolve better in the hexane layer. So we want to be able to identify the difference in the colors when it's aqueous dissolved in water, or if it's dissolved in hexane. So as you can see, the bromine, we see a gradient here, two different colors. The bottom layer is still the water layer, and remember that how that was a yellow color. The top layer is the hexane layer, and that is orange, which means when the bromine dissolves in hexane, it takes on a different color. that with the chlorine. It may be faint to see, but the hexane layer of chlorine has a faint yellow, whereas the aqueous layer is just clear, straight up clear. Uh, though this is, it could be understood that this color would be missed. Um, this chlorine color could be made to be darker, but we'd have to have an increased concentration, which is not really safe to handle. And then we're going to add hexane to our third. So this is the iodine, and I've just added some hexane and shaken it up. And so you can see the top layer is pink. That is a characteristic color of iodine dissolving in a nonpolar solvent like hexane. And the bottom layer is kind of now devoid of color. And that's because uh, whatever dissolved iodine there was in the aqueous solution most of that concentration has moved up into the top layer. And so, because it's more soluble in a nonpolar environment, that's where it went. So iodine is pink in hexane, and well, you don't see anything left down here anymore, but when iodine was in water, it was this color. Okay, I'm going to start the reaction with the halogens and the halides. And so this is your data table um, that shows the cross between the halogens and uh, the halides. Now, we'll start with this first tube here, which already contains bromine, bromine and water, and hexane. 
So we see the we see the hexane layer on top, which is orange, right, and um, the yellowish aqueous bromine on the bottom. So I'm going to add sodium chloride, and we're going to shake and see what happens. So the results are that the top layer, the hexane layer, is still orange with bromine, and the bottom layer is still yellow aqueous, so no change. Next, we're gonna try the we're gonna try the bromine, the bromine with iodide, sodium iodide. Again, two layers because there's a hexane layer and an aqueous layer. And there's a change. We now see pink layer on top in the hex in the hexane layer this pink and we see you know kind of an orangish aqueous layer on the bottom so again this was sodium iodide with aqueous bromine the next test tube is going to be Chlorine with bromide, sodium bromide. And there is effectively no change relatively clear to begin with and they're both still clear now. The next test is with chlorine and now I'm going to add iodide. So we can actually see there is a change in color now. There is a, a pink hue in the non-polar in the non-polar top layer. And a little bit of yellow in the bottom in the aqueous layer. This next tube is iodine. And I'm gonna add bromide to it. Essentially no change. The top layer was pink to begin with and it's pink now. And the bottom layer was you know, sort of yellowish, yellow clear, and it's still kind of sort of yellow clear. So basically no change. The last tube I'm gonna test is the iodine and I'm gonna add chloride to it. Essentially, there's no change. The top is still nonpolar and it's still pink. The bottom is still clear. Now, you may notice that did not do all nine combinations because uh, it's a little redundant to react to say the bromide with bromine or the chloride with chlorine 
or the iodide with the iodine, those would not see any change. That's why I didn't do those tubes. 